Here's a sneak peek at a fun design and a tutorial for a DIY mold. Hi Soapy friends, it's Steph from Micahs and More. Here's my DIY corrugated plastic slab mold. I didn't come up with this design, but I needed one that was just the right size for my test batches. You make this by scoring one side of the corrugated plastic. I wanted a 6 inch square mold with 1.5 inch sides. I'm using my X-Acto knife, an acrylic ruler, and my cutting mat. You can see here that I'm only cutting through one side of the corrugated plastic. The other side stays intact. I'll do all four sides this way and then a diagonal cut in the corners. This mold won't need to be lined and it is washable, but you will want to use sodium lactate or sea salt to help the soap release from the mold. The diagonal cut is only on the small corner piece. I didn't get it cut through all the way, so I turned it around to get a better angle. I'll fold over each side so that the crease stays nicely. I made this the day before I soaked, so I temporarily used electrical tape to hold the corners together and then I went out and got some binder clips which I think do a great job. And that's all there is to it. Let's make soap! I pre-mixed my white satin mica in a little bit of oil. I'm also using water dispersible titanium dioxide. Here I'm adding my cooled lye water into the melted oils. It already has sugar, sodium lactate, and tussa silk added. And when I say that this was cooled down, it was at room temperature, which I never do with my recipe and it was not on purpose. But I had a little issue with my dog who was able to get onto my kitchen counter, which is not where I make soap, but he was able to get my wallet and he basically ate all of it, or 90% of it, um, and he's fine but I had to make the soap wait until I could get back to it. 
So here I am mixing my melted oils with a stick blender. I use lard, coconut, olive pomace, cocoa butter, and shea butter in my recipe. I stick blend until it reaches an emulsion. I use my large spoonula to clean off my stick blender. It's all one piece silicone with a nylon core. I love how the tapered edges are great for getting out the last bits of soap. I'll hand stir in the fragrance oil with a small spoonula. It's the same basic design but has a slightly different shape and it's smaller. The fragrance oil is called Champagne Toast. And while I love the scent out of the bottle, I'm a little unsure of it in the finished product. It's one that I might ask my customers if they'd like a soap sample so that they can see how they like it as it cures. After that, I'll decide if I'll carry it. Let's get this soap in the mold. I'll start with some of the plain soap so that I can see if the fragrance oil will discolor it. I dispersed one quarter teaspoon of Marvelous Magenta Neon Pigment in a little bit of oil and added it to one cup of soap. The neons are very potent, so you won't need as much as you will mica to make a saturated color. My other color is Outrageous Orange Neon Pigment. To add some contrast, I'm using white satin mica. I'm also using water dispersible titanium dioxide. The idea was to incorporate glycerin rivers into the design, but it didn't end up that way in the final soap, and I think I should have colored a larger portion of the soap with the TD. Next, I'll pour the colors into a mixing cup on the side, kind of like a Clyde slide. I'll alternate the colors between the neons and the whites that I used but the titanium dioxide had a different consistency than the other colors because it just got lost in the middle of that pour so it didn't give me the contrast that I wanted. I think if I used more next time it would have done a better job.
So while the start of this was like a Clyde slide, I'm going to do a corner pour into the mold using the back and forth motion kind of like the cosmic swirl. So I have no idea what you would call this design. It's just um, adding a few things together to see what I get. I was actually inspired by the acrylic paint pours that I've been watching online. I tilted a bit to make the soap more level and then I'll pour the rest in. It was so tempting to mess with the top of this soap design, but I was good and I managed to leave it just how it was and I'm very glad that I did. I'll just tap it a bit to get some of the bubbles out. Then I'll put it in a box and under a blanket to force gel for about 24 hours. And now the unmolding. You can see how easily the mold pulls away from the soap. There's a little bit of tension, but that's because of the mold, not the soap. I do want to be careful though, because it's brand new and the soap is a little bit soft. I'm using my acrylic ruler and a knife to score and then cut the soap. It's not perfect by any means, but these are going to be samples, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's really not too bad. If you make soap and you'd like yours to have a more finished look, you can use a planer to cut off the surfaces that aren't so perfect. And here's the cut soap picks. I clean them up by beveling the edges with a vegetable peeler. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and the making of this soap. If you'd like to get the products used here, you can order online anytime at micasandmore.com. And I'd love it if you'd share your pictures of things that you make with my products in my Facebook group, Steph's Micas and More. Thanks for watching.